In 1996, Scholastic began publishing Animorphs. Over the next six years, Catherine Applegate and her husband, Michael Grant, under the pseudonym K.A. Applegate, produced 54 main series books, several spin-offs, and inspired a TV series, graphic novels, and a cult following. We can't tell you where we live. We can't even tell you our last names. But we can tell you our thoughts and feelings on this series, book by book. I'm Miranda. I'm Eddie. And I'm Chris. And we are... The The Andorks! These may be kids' books, but we discuss dark themes and mature content. There may also be some explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Okay, should we do Andalite Chronicles? Because we have a time. Too too chugga chugga. I don't even want to. That's what's in my head right now. (laughs) Big I don't know. I felt like doing Andalite Chronicles 24 minutes ago, but now I Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) Um. I just, I never get to be a total piece of shit about time because I'm always late. Same. I'm I'm living that genre fantasy right right now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm topping from behind. I get to be early because I don't don't leave my PC. <laughs> it's like the saddest reason to be on time. I was, yep, I've been here. That's just where I've been. I mean, that's, <laughs> the, yeah, that's how I am too. Chris, every time we start a new book, you ask how we do this thing. Like you forgot, but this time you genuinely a, don't have a blueprint. We're at, this is unprecedented. This is, no, this is the one time where I feel like we got this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's no three cent summary. I was about to say, you seem quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mic, my mic was like, that's a dumb joke. And it fell backwards. Um, yeah, no, we have no idea what we're doing here. I mean, was this even a book? It was <laughs> I, like, one. I remember it was book one. I remember rubbing my eyes all over it, but I don't remember getting any information from this. I'm just kidding. Okay. It was be careful with your eyes. You only get those two. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So we're we're doing Andalite Chronicles, and what is the name and of the first I... book? Part one. Prologue. Sorry, it's not it's, book one. No. It's um, <laughs> Andy's <laughs> Elfangor's Andy's, Journey. Elfangor's Andy's, Journey. Andy's Light. One pump Andy. I don't know. <laughs> one pump Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Who is one pump Andy? <laughs> that was like the closest to a spit take I've ever had. Like I. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. We we get um a very elaborate new cast here. I don't actually think We do. That, uh, and like, uh, and they none of them make deep impressions on me. <laughs> really. <laughs> Except of course a certain mop of long blonde hair. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not unlike Natalie Portman in Garden State, she announces mm-hmm. herself here, Lauren. Yeah, it's. I mean, Lauren. She had brown hair in that movie, but I was about to say she didn't have long blonde hair in that movie. Yeah, no, but I mean, the hair. manic yeah, pixie, my up. the manic pixie. Yeah, girl oh, manic pixie. yeah she is girl. mad. Yeah, there is. This is manic pixie AF. Oh K-A. yeah, no, I was really surprised, and we'll get there. But uh, you know, to those who already know, I was really surprised she didn't do cartwheels across. Oh, the I, grass. Was, I was. I was waiting for. I was it. waiting. She, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and she literally. There's a scene where this is the character Lauren. There's a scene. Where she does our joke about where she kisses the mouth. It's like she asks yep. about Andalite mouths because she she's already thinking about macking down on that Andalite. Yeah. Well, she kisses a cheek. She doesn't kiss on the mouth, if I'm remembering right. You can't kiss on the mouth with an Andalite Eddie. Know, the right. so I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She kisses right cheek, left cheek, and front cheek. She doesn't yeah. kiss her in the mouth. <laughs> What could would you be? don't? I don't want to say you should don't be. know that. Uh, you don't know that. <laughs> Andalite mouths maybe had once evolved to be just on the cheek, right over here, right just where my smooches. dimple is, right for smooches. Yeah, that's actually why the French cheek to cheek when they exactly kiss. It's where their right. mouths used to be. <laughs> to, um, because this it's our first so unhinged uh, already. It's our first chronicles book. I mean, we know we have That's the Gad Chronicles and the Taxon Chronicles coming, but this is the Wiggly Boy Chronicles. That's the Wiggly Boy Chronicles. Yeah. Um, we are not doing. We have not read the entire 
book. We're going to kind of experience it as Well, have it you comes. looked at that book? It's like the it's length of guy. regular books. It's a big boy. Yeah. It's like at least I as like, long as Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And I, I haven't right. had the attention yeah. span for that since I was six. Yeah. I never even read that book. I will say, <laughs> I, I can't imagine reading a book that's more than 120 very <laughs> small pages with very yeah. big font at this yeah. point. So this book is, Andalite Chronicles is broken up into three parts and we've just read the first part. For Alfangor's mm-hmm. Journey. Yes, and yeah. he's he gets all up in our business in the prologue here he's like i am inside your mind you whoever are listening to this it's it's like a death message he says my name is elfangor i am an andalite prince and i am about to die here's the thing i love this i love that he didn't tell us his full name because it's very on brand right but also why didn't he tell us his full name (laughs) Yeah, well, he doesn't say that he couldn't it's tell a us long his full name. name. It's just that it, it's he's low name. on time. He doesn't want to die in the last name. You know? yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot to dump here, and he somehow dumped 300 pages in his dying breath. And that's at this true. point, he's kind of like Cher in Madonna. He's Elfangor. He's not his whole name. He's more just... Mononymic. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. you believe in life? <laughs> the artist yes. formerly known as Elfangor. <laughs> you Champs. could do better, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 (laughs) So we get a lot of little drops here. We get, you know, they didn't expect the Yerks to be so strong, blah, blah, blah. He's mentions a pool ship. He says we would have defeated their pool ship. uh, If if not for the fact that uh, they had miscalculated. Didn't you used to work at a pool ship? (laughs) You know, I think I did. (laughs) You were lifeguard at a pool ship, (laughs) right? At a pool ship. Yeah, that's what I did. (laughs) Yeah. I also just like have this wonderful image of like little taxons on a carnival cruise with like water slides on the on the upper yeah. deck. You know what I'm talking about? Like that's they what like I see when I they love they tunnels love and slides. Oh my yeah. god! Yes, and holes. They yeah. love holes. And I imagine they just go. Whoop. Like, yeah, <laughs> just, I imagine for some reason they make the holes a little bit too narrow. So there's that oh. where it's clear oh, that like they the poop poop bear, through. Yeah, yes. like, yeah, yeah. We're right before Alfangor dies. So they have crashed and he has crashed in a construction site and Visser 3 is coming and he's already met with the Animorphs. Right. This is he's recording. Yeah, this, this is what's actually this is what doesn't check out because he's like, I am recording this. But the Yerks don't know that I've left a surprise with them. These five children. But I'm like, who are right the, over there? Who are right over there. And I'm being <laughs> eaten. I'm actually yeah. he might be being digested while he leaves this message. It's like we didn't realize there was a whole chapter there between him giving the powers and Visser three eating him. Like there's a yeah. lot that happens there in that little space. He's like doing a vaudeville plate spinning out. Yeah. He's just like, and I'll talk to Tobias a little, and I'll exactly. talk to Visser 3 a little, and I'll During that a scene, little. we were already like, oh wow, it's so impressive that he's managing to talk to Visser 3 and to them without Visser 3 knowing. He's got so much control, even though he's dying, and apparently he's been recording his Herakdelist. Yeah. His, Nicely done. <laughs> his final message. Which yeah. is, this, this is, is a ritual. We, we know a lot. We know the Andalites love rituals. Yeah. And so apparently this is the final message ritual. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he says, I have formed the mental link to the thought speak transponder in my fighter's computer. I will record my memories before the Yerks annihilate all trace of me. And I do think we have to wonder, kind of like Jake smiling, when did this start? When did he start recording this? Is he like thinking this while talking to them? Is this what he's doing when he's with Tobias? Like... Where is this moment where he's recording this? Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, it really is like there's no room for it in the kids retelling. There's just no yeah. time. It like it's just boom, ba boom, ba boom. I was viewing it more of like more as like a, a pensive like thing where yeah. you like so I that viewed this sense. first chapter, the prologue, as the only part that he's like actively recording and then the rest is drawn from his like yeah, directly yeah. from his memory, but there are several moments that he is clearly narrating to an audience who doesn't know 
what the creatures he's describing are, which I think is really strange. Yeah. And he has, he has an idea of how cliffhangers and drama work, which That's is true. not something you know unless you know how your are Maybe it's a Shahrazad situation and he's actually delaying <laughs> Mr. Three eating him. He's like, wait, yes, cliffhanger. Like, All right, finish. He's like, like, one more page, one more page. <laughs> and Mr. Three is such a professional. Yeah, yeah it's part it's of the part international of the ritual. Geneva conventions that you have to, yeah, you have to respect. <laughs> the cr- oh man, I have so much I want to talk about this book. Let's the just prologue skip this alone. Book. I know. I think this is the one pro. You no, but there's, there's do... really am... important stuff in the prologue. Let's skip the whole book. <laughs> Here's the Let's only bit that's important. On. Okay. Here's the bit that's important. And he admits to us in this prologue that he has been to Earth before, and he says, "Of course, the child would be there." Upon yes. his landing. So when yes. he meets them, he's like, oh, how crazy that I would die on Earth, a place I was before with that child. And when you flash back to Tobias's intro being a dreamy haired blonde person and, you know, we were trying to line him up to be a manic pixie dream girl from episode That's one. That's true. Maybe he gets it from his mom. Maybe he gets it from his mom. And also, and his- yeah. And he had that whole little moment with Elfangor that we were like what happened because even Tobias didn't tell us what happened in that little exchange Mm -hmm. he never narrated about it (laughs) it was two things it was two things he said remember these two things (laughs) Kendrona Rays yeah you're my son yeah (laughs) And he's like, I should tell the others about Kendrona Rays. Yeah. <laughs> it makes sense that Elfangor and Visser 3 are, are ever drawn to each other because they both have a flair for drama. Oh, yeah. Elfangor also introduces, he will go on to explain a race like the Screet Na, but mm-hmm. he also says just in the prologue, I was looking for a great weapon, the Time Matrix. No follow up, no explanation no. of what that is. Um, so we know why he was well, in the construction. It's a secret. Zone. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Ciro's, Ciro's kindness. He does say there is a great deal that no Andalite knows about me. We're getting a tell all this book. He's going to reveal everything, we hope. Mm-hmm. He's too weak to locate the time ship. So there's a time matrix and a time ship. Yeah, that was a weird slip. I was like, did they actually mean to add a time ship into the equation here? Well, where else do you keep a time yeah. matrix, Chris? I guess I guess you have to attach it to something. You're right. You don't keep it in your time garage. He name drops Lauren. Yes, uh, because humans are also my people. Lauren, dot, dot, dot. And the boy I have just met, but not for the first time. So that helps yeah. us zero in a little bit on who this child is. Also, I I struggle with this name because I do believe that it probably is just Lauren. But if you put a KY in front of it, it's Kylo Ren. <laughs> like, it's like, I think I think whoever named Kylo Ren <laughs> yeah, may have yeah. had a little bit of influence from Animorphs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know a Lauren with this spelling. Really? I've never seen it. Yeah. Maybe you just spell Lauren wrong. Can we talk about the little surprise? <laughs> is Elfangor's child the little surprise? Is it the morph? It's the morphing power, right? He's, that's why he follows up. I it's the morphing, the morphing power. power. It, okay. It's the morphing Every power. Every time yeah. I see it, I think it's I think it's his son. Little but. surprise does have a very, it's like, that's what you call your youngest child that you didn't mean to have. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's like, oh, that is, our, what a little surprise over that here. Is not, you're trying to rewrite history, but our patrons will know. Because when they go to read the notes, they will see that your first draft yeah. of this joke was so was much it worse. Fun? It was. What did I say? I don't remember. No, it, was it, was, it was Eddie. No, Eddie because was I have like, cats here. And I think when I hear a little surprise, <laughs> I left a little surprise behind. I feel like an animal oh. pooped in an inappropriate place. It, you Got said it. this is what you say when you pooped in someone's bed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't even remember <laughs> my own comment. <laughs> oh, so I also was wondering. So I have given the morphing power to five young humans, children really. But sometimes children can accomplish amazing things. What life experience do you think led Elfangor? I think to- he's talking about himself. Yeah? Because he was just a kid. 21 years ago, he was just a kid. Yeah, 21. Yeah. He was a little wrist running running all around. So was he Axe's age? Making out with in, aliens. In the I think he was probably a little bit just older. about... A little bit older. Just a little bit older. Yeah. He'd been an heiress longer, but like... Because like Axe had just become an heiress. 
Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. Okay. And he was too, he was like known to be too young to put in a battle, whereas Elfangor is being put in a battle. Speaking of that, chapter one, 21 <laughs> years before, we go back to when Elfangor is a teenager. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm a, thinking this makes a him older like older than X. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, and and Miranda points out that like this would make the year roughly 1975, which yep. we confirmed with later information. And I I think that this means he's what like 35, 36. He's like squarely mid 30s when we meet him and he dies. Yeah. yeah. So that frees up all your fanfic fantasies, put <laughs> all your hopes. You of don't Andalite. have to keep like aging him up in your brain. He's right, an adult. right. Like, <laughs> like all your Andalite horseplay, so to speak. You can you can just do that all Ow. of a Ow. <laughs> Get the spray bottle. <laughs> no, I'm going to horny jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so he, when we start, he's training with Sofor. Sofor is his name, right? Yeah. Do we get a title for him, or is he just Sofor? He's a he's a war prince, maybe. Before we get to that, war can prince. we can we set the scene a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Like, yeah. What, let's, what's let's. the What's the name of the ship we're on here? Like this is we're flashing back. We're on a dome ship, and it has a terrible name, Star Sword. Star Sword. Yeah, I think it's very My Little Pony esque. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think it's like I think we accidentally have our nexus point for that fanfic. You know, <laughs> we can get some ponies in there. You would think, I feel like when you get to name something, it's an opportunity to stick something really cool in, but it kind of, how do you think they landed on Star Sword? Well, like I said, like, you know, not Eddie, I don't know when the last time you were naming ships in the army, but like, it's hard. They mostly just name them after states and then they name them after like, it's, you know, yeah, and people. And then they're like, oh, that's a dead person. We can name it after them. And like, and yeah, like, yeah, actually, they just start off in people. So they'll have more people to name ships after. It gets really wild. (laughs) The moment I thought of when I saw Star Sword was naming the raft in Kingdom Hearts. Aaron Aaron. That was my first okay. time naming oh. a ship. What did you name it? I don't remember. Probably something better than Star Sword. I was Star third. Sword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, it's actually I'm Star Sword. Star Sword. Sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, how did they get my name? <laughs> we got a little backdrop on what it's like 21 years ago, 1975. For five long years, our princes had fought the viscers of the Yuk Empire. <laughs> That's a wild sentence. Like, um, here's the thing. I know, I know it was a different time. I know it was the 90s. But when... It was in the air. Desert Storm had already happened. Well, uh, when Alfangor gets to them and explains this, like it's been like, like a 10 generation long conflict, it had been going on for less time than the war in afghanistan <laughs> did at that point no in total oh, okay. so the total in length total. of the war in afghanistan the one right. that just ended is longer yes. than they've been fighting yes. the years <laughs> yeah 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 it's true it's a little bit of weird perspective i was like i just really felt like this was some sort of like millennia old blood feud which was yeah just I'm- because it was vague at first right yeah i guess so 30 years seems like a lot when you're nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't have that um, impression early on, but I think it was just that we didn't know how long it had been going on. And it did seem like it, it, it they set it up to be this epic struggle. So it did seem like it could have been going on forever. It seems well, they've been like, like it would the Andalites fight the Yerks. It's what they do. Like they, yeah, they yeah, make yeah, it yeah. like their identity. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it's not even like. Axe is a child who was born as the result of this war, having gone on for five years. Like that's he's true. not even born yet. He oh, he actually won't be born. It makes sense yeah. that it quite kind some of defines time. Yeah. their identity, the family's yeah. identity in that sense, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> War's so, bad, people. We are in this war. Elfangor is an heiress. Y'all will remember that is the rank that one little Axe had. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> and he he's sparring. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Engaging fighting. in some good old fashioned, yeah, tail fighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's good, clean fun. 
Tail fighting. And he is sparring with some Andalite bigger than him, who we hear is called Sofor. So on and so for. But so for, tell me if I'm wrong here, he is Axes. Oh my God, Axes. Uh, Elfagor's mentor. <laughs> They're not the same person. Yes. He's being trained by him in combat yeah. right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It reminds me of that scene in Dune where Paul is like battling. Um, his trainer and his trainer and the, and like Paul's getting cocky, but like, do, do you guys yeah. see Dune? Yeah. yeah. No, um, but I want it to. Hot. You should see it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so for he's Elfangor's mentor here, he's training him for combat, but he doesn't show up again after this. Is that right? He doesn't come on either of the missions that in the. No, he's part. he's near not in the, he's near not retirement. In one. Yeah. 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 Those who can't do teach. Right. Is so far, so far as we know, that's his situation. And he's defined by this scar that he has yes. across his face. He's a badass scar mm-hmm. under his eye. And Alfangor can't land a hit. He can't land a hit. And he's like, search your feelings. Abandon your target computer. And he's like, what? And he's like, don't think, feel. And he's like, okay, okay you're scaring me. <laughs> and uh, he thinks he might land a blow and he doesn't. And so forth, just like, oh, wait, one time they accidentally do call him so far. Actually? <laughs> they do. Or at, least, at least in our version hey, of the books. Maybe old so far will end up with a new scar. <laughs> oh my god. That's because it rhymes with scar. Elfangor feels like so far so far is anticipating every one of his movements and he's not sure how that could be. Yeah, he's like it's a thing that happens in boxing where it, it's like how did they know that that hook was coming? I must have been like telegraphing my yeah. telegraphing. Yeah, he has That's a tell but he doesn't know what the tell is. And this guy isn't nice enough to tell him. He's just like, you know, may, you know, maybe you could hit me if you were asleep or fuck, if I was asleep. <laughs> you know how it is in good writing. You show, you don't tell. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so far, also ribs Elfangor for, he, said, he tells him he's too in. Why did that sound dirty? Yeah, he's too smart. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what part? Because condoms are ribbed? Ribs. I don't know. Oh. Yes, Did that is you why. just yep. hear yeah. rimmed? Like, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. so far is... No, I don't want to say... I don't want to insert that into the scene. I'm, like, I'm not taking the bait. But we get a, an ongoing tension in this first part is Andalites are expected to be warriors and intellectuals, but they're also kind of ashamed still about being more academic nerds. or more yeah nerds. it seems like there's a shift going nerds. on in the culture yes. that it's becoming more technical and the old guard is like we don't need any of those hoity-toity computer skills and the new guard is like i just know what they trained me in the academy sir <laughs> yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> it is funny it's like um yeah like we didn't have simulators in our day and a lot more of you died too yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and these kids probably did a lot of uh, a lot of training in Minecraft. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, stuff like that. Uh, so far has like a really wacky exit here. It feels very cartoony. So, uh, so far says like, um, you should be a scientist, not a warrior. There's no time for thought in a fight. And Alfanger is like, you must have forgotten that at some point to get that scar. He says it like under his breath. And he, but even under his breath, he's like, why am I such a fucking idiot? And I'm idiot. like, you have thought speak. Yeah. It is yeah. so easy to not directly tell someone what you're thinking like how did this fucking happen yeah i know yeah he just has no impulse control it's what being a little teenager is but so far it's like uh oh i see you've noticed my scar you know how i got it i got it from my own teacher uh the teacher didn't like uh, uppity heiress uh and he thinks this is very funny and he kind of gallops off laughing at his own joke and Miranda you pointed out something about how he's described as he's running away (laughs) I forgot about this that's right Uh, because it says that he went galloping off across the grass quote holding his tail as high as an andalite half his age would (laughs) end quote what the fuck does that mean because like that's the obvious dick joke right but like what no? What does it mean? <laughs> like, is that their version of standing up straight? I just don't understand. Well, what was the thing in the other thing where he talks about his dad's hooves 
going gray or something. Like it's like so like hooves when you get dull. old, hooves going ho- dull. Hooves yeah. go dull. Yeah. So instead of balding, your hooves go dull and your tail droops. Why? <laughs> yeah, you lose the tension in the tail. You lose the <laughs> yes. Like, you well, lose, flaccid you comes lose up in mu- this book. You go a little flaccid. That is that lift it. You yeah, go a little flaccid. Gonna, it is the, just, it is the word they're not it. saying. Up, you know, yes. as yeah. silly as <laughs> yeah. Up. Yeah. 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 Yes. So that's how so far exits, and so far he hasn't come back. Uh, <laughs> you made the same joke I did. I didn't mean but to. Again, <laughs> yeah, you sure did. <laughs> so this other heiress comes wandering up. Rival. His rival, yeah. We, he's introduced really as a rival to Elfangor, and Elfangor is like, I don't really like him. But that will not, in particular, be demonstrated over the course yeah. of this following yeah. part. Basically, they seem to immediately Elf- trauma bond. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> like all good soldiers. Yeah. Elfangor, like, I think is just an only child. Like, I think that's they the thing. Are. He's like, this person's going to take away my toys. Like, yeah. that's the vibe I'm getting. So Keep going. he is the other heiress on the ship, and Elfangor outranks him in seniority by four days. He got here four days for sooner. I think Which is nothing. It, it isn't, but it's That's, twins will tell you it also matters. Um, but they're not twins. Four days apart for twins <laughs> okay. is not I that mean, common. I mean, the hours <laughs> difference matters with twins, okay? So I will say that like if you go to summer camp and your parents are like, you're gonna come in a week late, don't worry, you'll be there, you'll still have a whole month or whatever, or whatever it is. It's like you still feel like everything was codified well, before. Chris, you yeah. You're a few weeks older than me and you're definitely older than me you know so yeah uh, yeah you're right i do um, it's like almost having a year apart for me Uh, well it's like it's not that i'm older it's like i'm more worldly you know it's (laughs) like i like i don't like i don't walk up to an atm and then when it doesn't go right i don't start crying and then ask chris to do it what else are you supposed to do (laughs) i will play out money now (laughs) we were all together money now um, we, uh, I think they looked at you, Miranda, at one bar we were at, and they asked, they, and then they looked at Chris, and they, they carded us, and then they looked at me, and they're like, well, you can show us your ID as well, but, and I was like, no, <laughs> Chris is older. <laughs> For some reason, they looked at me, and they were like, oh, I need to card her, and then they looked at Chris, and they were like, oh, I'd be offensive if I didn't card, you know, both of them, and then they looked at you, and they were like, you too. Yeah, you can show us your ID. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, thank you. <laughs> I have a, I, I think... Arbron? Is that right? Arbron? Arbron, which is so hard to say. (laughs) Unnecessarily. (laughs) Really, really hard. Um, I feel like Arbron, if there is some kind of rivalry thing or they're pitted against each other, I feel like it's Arbron's a little more hot headed than Elfangor. Yeah. And I feel like he's a little bit more if if Elfangor runs the risk of being too intellectual, that we don't really see that. I feel like Arbron is not that Arbron is more combat ready like he's better at shooting i and- would i mean i would say oh, that except that he's an no. he's a data he's an excellent yeah, you're totally right yeah 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 no. and i would say like i would say like he is he's not like hot-headed he just doesn't notice the social implications is like he's like looser in his chain of command yeah. depreciation he gets a, he gets like a good hot headed like, line in here or there but he's mostly just uh gung-ho and they're both pretty good yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like every time we say something yeah. like but they're but they're both kind of like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> and frankly neither of them are like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> so arbron walks up and s- is like, hey, 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 Elfangor, having fun with the old <laughs> year what the hell killer. Was that? <laughs> that was, I, I loved can't it. talk. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, I wanna... hey, Elfangor. I looked for the, I was like, that would be great opera. if he entered like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> they made out. That's what but, we're doing. Uh, he says, having fun with the old year killer. And again, they've been in this war for five years. Mm-hmm. Arbron tries to be like oh you know you're so stiff and formal haha you're all haughty but uh you dumb asshole you uh you always drop your hind left hind leg when you're about to strike and that's how he knows you're gonna hit him Mm -hmm. arbron kind of helps him out because that actually ends up mattering like he's able to communicate something that's so for is it he's doing a solid for elfangor yeah He's also, he's very perceptive, which I think continues to be a plot consistent throughout the rest of this book. Can I ask, I have a question about this whole, how long the war has been going on and everything. I feel like maybe part of the thing, like Axe is constantly saying in the main, in our main series, 
in five of your Earth years, right? As if he's only using that unit of measurement for the Animorphs' sake, right? But here, mm-hmm. they're also using... We have to assume they're also using Earth years, right? And I feel like there could have been a thing, and maybe this is just because it's for kids and they worried they wouldn't make the jump, where it was like... 20 of their year, like L, we get with elves where it's like 25 of their mm. years is equivalent to ours or so, like five or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or like they only have a year when it's like a year passes between all the planets lining up. Right. But we don't get any of that. So we have to assume it's five of our years, right? If this were like a postmodern, like hard sci-fi thing, I think you would be reading this as though it were published in the New York Times and they'd have like a little explainer on yes. like, yeah. For the purposes of clarity, yeah. we're going to publish everything in Earth years. Yeah, or yeah. Like yeah. That. But it definitely um, is Earth years because we have it lined up with actual Earth conflicts. Yeah, later it's on true. In the book. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. We didn't really hit it, but like he says some ridiculous shit in the prologue about time right after they say how amazing children are and they're going to save the world. I came to this place, <laughs> this empty construction site, looking for the weapon I know is hidden here, which is we now know as the Time Matrix. But there's no time now, no time, which is ironic considering it's a time matrix. And I'm not just being petty. He goes <laughs> on to, like he talks about he's met him, but not for the first time. And then later he says something about how he, or somewhere he says, like, I've spent like 50 years, but no years on this planet. And mm. I don't know when. Oh, here it is. I spent many years on Earth and yet no time at all. <laughs> so that like he's like opened up this like wormhole place yeah. where like he could have a child with Loren. And you know what I mean? Yep. It's like it's just like and that's all in the prologue. I'm sorry. Just while we're on the prologue, we also should. Hit, I don't think we knew this before because it was it was I who created Visser 3. I who caused the abomination. Oh, how did we miss that? Oh, yeah. How did we not mention we're that? Ju- we're such we're snobby bitches. Job. There was yeah, a lot in this so prologue bad. for a book that has usually nothing in the cold opens. Like, Frankly, yeah. I'm surprised we thought we could get by it today because <laughs> everything that like I'm going to be like shitting out my ears about in a minute is all right here yeah. in this in the prologue. prologue. Chekhov's chapter, they used to call it. <laughs> Back to the Arists. Uh, we get a cute little moment. I don't moment. like that word. I know. We get a cute little moment where we learn an Andalite idiom, which is get your hooves oh, yeah. back on the grass and out of the air. <laughs> Did you read my <laughs> comment on this? No. <laughs> uh, read my comment on this and explain to the fine people. I thought it was going to be a dirtier thing. Although in the simile in this context is more like, when will you stop talking and start stuffing your face? (laughs) Because if you're getting your hooves back on your ground and your hooves are your mouth, then it's like, when will you stop being idea? Chris, it's very obviously head out of the clouds and feet back on the ground. But your feet is also the thing you eat with, Miranda. (laughs) So stuffing your face is appropriate here. And also, why would he be in the air? Because he's confused about sitting later. So I don't know why you would ever have your hooves in the air. I don't know why your hooves would be in the air. But think about this. (laughs) If you're on the Andalite homeworld and you eat grass... And it everywhere really there's grass, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And you eat grass, and everywhere there's grass, and someone tells you to get your hooves out of the sky and back on the ground. It's like you're take. It's like I'm taking my mouth and I'm touching my closed mouth to cheeseburger. I'm not gonna take a bite. I'm not hungry. But that's what they're asking me to yeah, do. They're like, will you gets, stop what you're doing? This just gets into no, the whole thing. Right. No, no, it gets into the whole thing that like we have to talk. And I mean, the books, we have to talk about these mouth hooves more because we and we're going to we're going to talk about it. Until we get enough. to Ben and Jerry's 51 flavors of grass. Here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, it's you a guys, terrible you hear place that? for a mouth. That's all I just want to like. It's like, <laughs> yes, I agree. And, 100%. And the books will, well, they in, don't they don't have a mouth there. No, no. But they have flavors of grass. He says he doesn't know what taste is, but they yeah. have flavors, <laughs> have flavors of grass. Of grass. <laughs> Oh my God, do you guys hear that? Wee, wee, wee. This just in from the battle bridge. Oh, we no. got a dro- oh no! We just got a, dr- a DM, yeah. a direct message of sorts from the battle bridge saying, Will Aris, Elfangor, and Arbron to the battle bridge immediately come? Yoda's on the battle bridge. 
And they're like, well, when you get when you get summoned to the battle bridge, you got to go. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> well, they were, our, <laughs> argument, our argument was totally forgotten because we were both being we were both busy being shocked and horrified. That was a funny line for me. It's just like, okay. The thing about that sentence, that's one of those sentences where like, <laughs> that feels like the sentence where your creative writing professor goes, why use many word when fewer word make do? Yeah, they're such <laughs> strong words. Like, and they busy and they're, being shocked and horrified. Yeah. We were both busy being shocked and hi- horrified. We don't, we don't need busy being. No. Oh, we were both shocked and horrified. And also, <laughs> one, you know, our one. yeah, we both. probably don't yeah, need just horrified. We were, we were just shocked. They're, we're probably going to need another... horrified later when some horrifying <laughs> things happen. <laughs> Save it. Don't Use spend your dime words but now. We also get. Um, they say that the captain. They're talking about being summoned to the ship and how how shocking and horrifying it is. And they say the captain of the dome ship is like one of the ancient gods, which someone marked here. And yeah. we don't know about it's these nice ancient I, gods. I marked it. Yeah. Yeah, I marked it. I just, I've been enjoying a couple times in this book, they refer to something that happened concretely as having been mythic. And it's in, it's neat because like their time scale is similar to ours for that. Mm. Like, like, like humans doing something 50,000 years ago, but their mythic is like higher tech level than ours. So I just right. am like underlining the use of ancient gods or mythic or whatever. I was yeah. just like, I'll throw those highlights in there. Cause so here we, All right, here we go. They're fucked. They're going to the battle bridge. They assume that they are in a great deal of trouble because why else would the captain speak to an heiress? Uh, we get a lot of description about shafts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Connecting the dome to the engines is a long, long shaft. Brad, did you own- I can take it. So, okay. You want, you no, seems I like you want to talk about the shaft, Chris. Uh, I want to talk about shaft. Yeah. Shaft. Cause, uh, cause we're, <laughs> we were starting to talk about the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> and then Chris interrupted and asked if we wanted to talk about the shaft. Yeah. They're private areas. About. The shaft yeah, holds the their private areas. It's, yeah. <laughs> shaft. Sorry. That is actually from the book that all along the shaft is the quarters. Mm-hmm. Uh, the private area. Wait, is it just a shaft or is it a long, Oh my long god, long shaft? all along the shaft. <laughs> um, is, that, is this like grapes on a vine? <laughs> is it just like tons of testes going no, down no, the No, no, it's within the like, shaft. Okay. Yeah. Oh god. The long, oh, it's long like, shaft. It's like, um, it's like with blimps. You know how blimps have like you can have an exposed gondola or you can have like the gondola up inside. I don't want you to know anything about my gondola. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. Okay, so they're running down past the quarters and uh, Elfangor is giving us a description of his quarters and saying that he has a wish flower in his quarters because he's getting a little brother. Oh, yeah, there you go. And the wish flower is part of the ritual of getting a little brother. He has to pray to the wish flower and do the whole thing. And apparently his ass has to stick out. Yeah, because his room is so small, he has to like like stand up and do the prayer. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. To do yoga, he has to keep his dorm room open. <laughs> do you think he has to say the prayer in like a really cutesy voice because it's about a new oh, baby? Yeah. We welcome like, our hopes embodied. We welcome a new branch of the day. We welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and so on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also learn a little bit about Andalite society. We get that the electorate has voted to allow more children to be born since we're in a war now. They say if the war goes on for long and there are lots of battle that some families may even have three and four children. So this is what we were talking about earlier when we said that the war led to acts. Yeah. And we should note, holy shit. Like the idea, like Alfangor needs to read the writing on the wall with that one. Like he should not be thinking he's going to live a long, healthy life if the yeah. government <laughs> is like, make more wow, babies. you know what? We should really have more babies because even though it takes 20 years, like we're losing <laughs> a lot of people. So. Yeah, uh, we get the mention of a sport called drift ball. Thought that seemed that cool. That sounds cool. Yeah, because he says uh, that the captain has a quarter so big you could play drift ball with. Mm-hmm. I'm imagining it's a very sad game where, like, like imagine, for example, an Andalite playing night volleyball and just constantly puncturing the ball with its Aww. tail. Uh, like, that's so sad. It's See, yeah. I was thinking drift ball would be like 
volleyball with people with short attention spans. <laughs> <laughs> I, you serve and then and somebody then starts like, talking huh? to you about anime and you're like what and then, and then it hits yeah. you and you're like oh no you got me oh, <laughs> you I got drifted me. Like, I drifted or it's like or it's like like some sort of race on a track where everybody's on a, all the andalites are on a big ball and they drift around corners trying yeah. to balance on this or you ball. can only hit the ball while you're drifting mm. doing a sick drift with the back of your car like in Rocket League yeah, yeah a little bicycle flip man you two are so much better at coming up with sports than me <laughs> I don't think I that's could what you up. consider better at coming up with sports <laughs> they sound fun to me I'm like yeah okay but anyway. the important thing here is um, we're we're not talking about our dorm rooms right now. We're running down to the Battle Bridge, yeah. and we're going to need our hooves to carry us down that long central shaft. Yes, that, right. That rough textured, sh- yes, straight ribbed. hallway, ribbed, <laughs> ribbed. ribbed. for ribbed. the ease of the wrists to run down without falling <laughs> yeah. over. Because you know they'd be slipping and sliding on that floor. Oh, Otherwise. yeah. They um, almost run into a prince. Mm-hmm. Uh, a prince. But, but then they're like, oh, we got called to the battle Which, bridge. And what? he's like, oh, you, those silly arras. This The floors are the first of a few things that we'll have anticipated yeah. in, when we, yes. earlier in the series, but we, do, we get answers to that. We do have to, like, Eddie, when you brought up the floors, now I'm... I'm all I'm I'm all about yes and and being a good sport, but I must have been in a snit that night because when you brought up the floors, I recall in my head being like, "Why are we talking about the floors? Of course they can stand." And then and then like here we are five of books course. later, but it sat for five books. They didn't talk about the fucking floors. <laughs> like and, <laughs> well, we haven't been on an Andalite ship. Yeah, we had in the one book we did a prologue the in book that a. book with yeah, Axe. Yeah. Oh yeah, but Without it's Bangor. like but they're like. But it must have been a thing where children were children pulling out the in. little postcards <laughs> and writing in and being like, Can they they how do they not fall over? <laughs> I went to the farm show and I saw a horse fall over on the concrete. No. <laughs> do you think when they play drift ball, they're not on a ribbed floor? <laughs> Maybe that's the whole point of drift ball is it's slippery. Drift. It's like it's like hockey. It's yeah. like, it's, slippery. Yeah. Oh, that would be fun if they're just slipping and sliding. It's like Bambi on the That'd ice. That'd be so cute. Oh. oh. <laughs> so we, <laughs> we're never going to get through these books, you guys. <laughs> Thanks for listening to Anadorks. We'll be back soon with lots more to say. Until the Andalites return... Or at least until next time. See you soon.